ciudadanos que estén informados, que estén articulados a las nuevas tecnologías, pero al mismo tiempo mantengan su identidad, su cultura y su ciudadanía, son aquellos que serán más capaces de crear, producir conocimiento, información y en último término valor en una economía que es de la información y el conocimiento. Bueno, yo la verdad eh, discutiría el concepto de sociedad virtual, sociedad real. Creo que la virtualidad en la que vivimos es una de las dimensiones fundamentales de nuestra realidad. O sea, eh, vivimos con Internet. No vivimos en Internet o para Internet, pero con Internet. We're in a moment of time in which our society is undergoing profound and prolonged change. Technological change, cultural change, economic change, political change, and education has to prepare kids not for the world that was, but the world that will be. And human resources are like natural resources. They're often buried deep. You have to go looking for them. They're not just lying around on the surface. You have to create the circumstances where they show themselves. And you might imagine education will be the way that happens, but too often it's not. Every education system in the world is being reformed at the moment, and it's not enough. What we need, and the word's been used many times during the course of the past few days, is not evolution, but a revolution in education. This has to be transformed into something else. And the reason so many people are opting out of education is because it doesn't feed their spirit. It doesn't feed their energy or their passion. So I think we have to change metaphors. We have to go from what is essentially an industrial model of education, a manufacturing model, which is based on linearity and conformity and batching people. We have to move to a model that is based more on principles of agriculture. We have to recognize that human flourishing is not a mechanical process, it's an organic process. And you cannot predict the outcome of human development. All you can do is, like a farmer, is create the conditions under which they will begin to flourish. So when we look at reforming education and transforming it, it isn't like cloning a system. Now, in this room, there are people who represent extraordinary resources in business, in multimedia, uh, in the internet. These technologies combined with extraordinary talents of teachers, provide an opportunity to revolutionize education. One of the important aspects of the learning process that students need to learn is that it's social, it's connected, it's networked. It doesn't send the right message to students if we say, learn in social connected ways, but I'll teach you in one way. So the importance of teaching together is that it gives students a multi-dimensional experience of knowledge. It teaches students the importance of being connected and collaborating with others in activities that we're involved in. What's different today, I think, is that the knowledge pieces are fragmenting more, fat, more rapidly and there's more fragments than there used to be. So what used to be, let's say, a 200-page textbook might today be a five-minute video on YouTube or a 10-minute lecture on a different site. So the knowledge pieces are smaller now than they perhaps were in the past. But the interesting thing is once your knowledge pieces become smaller, there are more configurations available. So if you have five pieces of information, you can connect them a certain number of ways. So that's where we need to test the validity of the knowledge coherence that we're making. But all of these, again, are part of this process of being networked and connected, and we form new ideas, and we challenge those ideas through those networks. In a classroom, you can have students start playing with video recordings and remixing videos, and you can teach them how to begin to learn or function in a social network that maybe includes students from other cities. Now, none of these things mean you have to change your curriculum yet. These are all systems that allow you to change the teaching and learning process. Lo fundamental de este tipo de herramientas es que lo pueden conectar a través de lo visual con elementos que de pronto no lo tienen a la mano. Entonces lo acerca un poco más a ese conocimiento. Y en el caso particular del aula taller, eh, mejor todavía, 
porque la posibilidad de hacer la conexión de lo que es una computadora con elementos de medición o elementos de automatismo, el alumno puede de pronto hacer mediciones o programar automatismo directamente con su máquina. Hay simuladores de circuitos, eh, hay software de cálculo que me permiten ingresar con datos y el software me arroja un resultado de lo que yo necesito. Hay administradores de nuestra escuela que están trabajando sobre la elaboración de eh, nuevos software para facilitar la tarea de enseñanza en el aula. Incluso hay un nuevo proyecto que es el voluntariado universitario, que guiados por docentes van a hacer la apoyatura en los colegios secundarios del uso del negro. Entonces se está haciendo una movida grande para que realmente se pueda asimilar esta herramienta y usarla de la mejor manera. Hello, my name is Judy Harris. It's preposterous, isn't it? Design a house around a faucet. But in many ways, we've been asking teachers in many parts of the world to do something similar for about 25 years. We've been asking them to design learning experiences for students around digital tools and resources. Now, as ridiculous as that sounds, in some ways, it's understandable that we've made this mistake and made it for so long. These tools are incredibly powerful. They have enormous potential for helping students to learn even better and teachers to teach even better. But the problem is when we look to the tools to suggest how we should teach. It's like having a shiny new hammer, because when you have a shiny new hammer, everything can look like a nail. Another way to say this is that the tail wags the dog. When we look to the technology to suggest how we should teach, how we should help students to learn, we have it backwards. Creo que ahí el, la cuestión a, a pensar y conversar es cómo la escuela fortalece otras políticas de conocimiento, cómo ayuda a que se hagan otras cosas que la, las que los chicos ya hacen. Eh, los chicos usan mucho las netbooks para entretenerse, para comunicarse, eh, navegar eh, con las cosas que les interesan y eso está muy bien. Me parece que la escuela tiene que ayudar a ampliar sus horizontes con otras búsquedas, eh, entendiendo mejor qué es lo que hay atrás de los buscadores, por ejemplo, qué otro tipo de producciones se pueden hacer. Si yo hago, no sé, un remix, hago un video, bueno, cómo ese video puede dialogar con otras producciones culturales, cómo puede dialogar también con las disciplinas de la escuela, bueno, cómo la historia, la sociología, la economía, eh, la geografía me ayudan a pensar mejor en el mundo en el que vivo o el mundo natural también. Eh, eh, yo puedo tener muchas, man, muchas cosas a mano, pero si no sé que existen, no las busco. Entonces ahí, si nadie me muestra que valen la pena, que me dicen algo para mi vida, no las voy a ir a buscar. Entonces sí creo que es en eso el lugar de la escuela sigue siendo el mismo en otras condiciones, que es el de poner a disposición conocimientos, lenguajes, ayudar a enriquecerlos. Traditionally, think about the distinction between formal and informal education, uh, what happens in schools and what happens other places. I think increasingly we need to see these things in a relationship to each other and to rethink school activities in relationship to what's happening in these other environments and in the other direction for the schools to bring experiences and learning that takes place in the, these other environments into the classroom and into the school, especially for high school students and adolescents. The idea of a wheel with spokes, with the school is the hub of the wheel, and the spokes connect that hub to the, these other learning environments. <laughs>